they've got a brand new album, Black and White Rainbows, which is out now, and that's Mad Love, the single uh, from the the first single from this new album. And um, sitting in one of the big chairs, actually a chair I'm pretty sure all of us would like in our house if our house were big enough for such a luxury. Uh, Ever Voice this season, a new judge, a new team leader, and of course the uh, lead singer in Bush is Gavin Rosdown. He joins us this morning. Morning, Gavin. Good morning. Hi, Gavin. Um, right, let's start at the beginning. Uh, sitting in the big, well, not the very beginning, because that would be quite long. Uh, the big chairs, the voice. Um, tell us about how you came on board there. Um, well, I got this call right out of the blue, and I thought it was a, a bit of a prank from, from to my, my PR person. Would I be interested in talking about the voice, you, you know, being a, a coach on the Voice UK? And I thought it was, I, I was being punked, and um, I didn't really believe it, but I... It's a real fast process from being that suggested. Then I, that was on Tuesday, Thursday, did a Skype call. Monday, I flew to London, and they gave me the, the gig there and then. So mm. it was a weird one, right? You know, so, yeah, I'm having a great time, though. I bet. Well, Gavin, you've had two roles. You're a musician and also been an actor. Yeah, you know, I've done, I've done about six films now and three TV shows that I've been in, but definitely doing The Voice. And, and all TV and films smell the same. When you walk onto the set, I don't know what it's like. With it's just there's something about the, those big warehouses, those big places. But I love going to work every day. I mean, mm. I've got a really big day this weekend um, with the quarterfinals. Yeah. Yes. And um, so it's a real laugh. And one of the greatest things is, of course, is spending time with Sir Tom Jones, who I went out for dinner with last night. And just kind of it's a bit surreal to be, to, to be around Tom <laughs> 15 hours a day because he's a, he's unbelievable what's he uh, what's he like is he does he um i've always found with some people that are real legends is that they'll talk at you but they're so interesting and they've got so many amazing stories that you'll quite literally just you don't feel the need to ever like even have a conversation with them no, in a funny, way. funny about him is that you know through my own life i've been lucky enough to meet some people who have, who have incredible histories and the thing that sets them apart from all the you know, the people, the, the the crazy kind of legends, is that he's got the grace to listen to other people, and oh, he nice. has the grace to share the, the conversations. He doesn't hog it, come in, and it becomes the the Tom Jones show. And I think that's his most disarming quality: is that that charm and that interest in other people. What about your guys? Your so you've got Sarah Morgan, Max Vickers, and mm-hmm. Truly Vord left. Now um, we have got the odds, and Jamie Miller is the is the favourite. Your guys are kind of middle of the pack, so which means they're perfectly capable of uh, of coming uh, coming out and winning it um, in the end. And, and also, it kind of you're at the stage where it's it's not winner takes all yet. It's getting through and getting through. So you're very healthy in that way. Yeah, I didn't. Well, when I first came on the show, because you know, I've had lots of, uh, I've had a nice career, but but I was fully aware that to come onto a show of that magnitude and to be in, in England or the UK is that loads of people were going, who's this guy? And I was, I'd be going, I don't know who I am, I'm still finding out. <laughs> so I was, my biggest concern being pure English was like, what if no one wants to be on my team? You know, because even the face of going on, on Tom's team, you know. But what 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 transpired, which was really great, is that mm. I ended up with an amazing team, and I don't have the same hang-ups. <clears throat> People are obsessed about winning this show. For me, I take it so seriously with these contestants that they're all at the beginning of their journey. Like uh, Sarah's 16, Trudy's 22, mm. and I think mm. 24 or something. Yeah. But for me, it's, it's it's really about preparing them for each step of the way, each step of the tournament, if you like, you know, each match, and not looking not looking forward to the, to the final because the final is irrelevant when you're in the quarterfinals. The quarterfinals are the only thing that matters. And um, it's just been my job to prepare them for that. And, and then let the chips fall where they may because, you know, I'm on the show with Jennifer Hudson who came seventh on American Idol. Yes. On one hand, you could say, oh, dear, sorry about that, love. Now you're going to go back and work at Burger King where she worked before. But instead, she went on and she won an Oscar and an old Golden Globe starred in a Broadway production and she's doing another film and she's got a record out. So they are hung up on this whole thing of winning the voice. But for me, it's just the start of their careers and they get so much exposure. It's a bit like if you take the context of um, Take That, Mm. you know, everybody will put all their money, all the money they have on Gary Barlow being the one because he was the songwriter. (laughs) And and then who's the one who goes out there and and outsells all the stadiums is Robbie Williams. And Gavin, let's take your own career in the 90s when you first started. You had Britpot, you was fighting against that. But you had a lot of success in America, probably more so than over here. 
Well, the way it worked was that, that being in a rock band, I was never meant to be Justin Timberlake. So I was never meant to be on Radio 1, who've never been my friends. I was meant to be more counterculture. So when I played five nights at the Brixton Academy, yeah. I thought I was doing pretty good. But that was always seen as like, oh, poor you. Must be terrible, only five nights at Brixton. <laughs> so I never felt that disconnect. I just never was like a household name in England. But I, I didn't do the kind of music where you're meant to be a household name. I, did, I made music for the disaffected. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, I think you're very modest when you say that you might have come on The Voice and people don't know who you are, because you're pretty high prominence. It's very <laughs> modest of you. What about your new album and how Bush are now compared to how they were, say, then, how you've grown as a band, how you've changed? Yeah, it's interesting. I just think that, you know, we really work at it. You know, it's like anything. It's, um, it's a craft, and I think we got better at it. And I think I feel a better performer. I still have guitar lessons every week. I really try and improve you know because it's just uh, i i i figured that the um if you haven't written a song as good as the beatles and n not many of us have there's plenty of headroom to get better at being a songwriter so i just see it like that really lovely um gavin uh, we know you're an arsenal fan are you a pierce morgan arsenal fan or are you far more calm or an <laughs> arsenal finger <laughs> Oh, I'm more Arsene Wenger. I mean, look, for me, you know, from a distance and, and watching it from America and coming here, and, and, love, and one thing I've got to say, I've been loving to, to, be, to be back, watching my, you know, match of the day, just being really in the, the zeitgeist of what's going on. You just get the feeling that with all these great new managers, you know, Conte, Klopp, uh, Guardiola, that these guys came along and they just sort of usurped a bit of Wenger's approach. And, um, you know, obviously he had, you know, when we were doing really, really well a few years ago with Vieira um, and, and that era, there was the size and power and pace. And then all that happened is you've got these guys coming in who are saying, well, look at, look at the size of all these smaller players from Barcelona, you know, the, the speed, the way they move. And you just get the sense that, that, that Arsene is, is, is hanging on to an idea that, uh, that he can just outsmart them when the reality is when he would go up against all these teams, apart from obviously the, the win over Chelsea a few weeks ago, that was very nice, they, um, they're just being outsmarted. So for me, it's a, I wish it would be a sort of wake-up call for him in that he would just adopt some of those ta tactics that are a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more attacking, a little bit more on the edge. It just feels not complacent but just a bit too safe. And if you look at the way that the, 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 these managers, you know, you take a Conte, you take a Guardiola, yeah. they just they seem to be, you know, they, they, the three at the back, you know, loaded midfields, and they say attacking, exciting football. And so, in a way, it's just a call to arms. But you know, I can't argue with the success. I mean, Wenger took that team, my team, from being a really steady, good team, but to being a really, you know, top 16 clubs in Europe. It's just that now, you know, like the Bayern result and all that sort of stuff, it's just sort of being outsmarted. So I just want him to get inspired by it and find his own way to improve. So I'm definitely on the side of Arsene Wenger because of his history. I don't like it when people just get, things don't go well and suddenly you've got to chuck out the guy with all the experience. Mm. You know? I don't know if Piers Morgan could, could, could uh, manage the team very <laughs> please well. Please, God, don't encourage him. Do I, not. I'm not. I won't. No, no, please don't. Uh, Gavin, thank you for thank coming you, on. Enjoy, enjoy tonight. Good luck with uh, your um, your three guys in the in the final in the quarters tonight. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank enjoy you. It. All the best. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. We will. Thanks, Gavin. Um,